Hey. Well, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. I can't see you. There we go. Hey, look at look at you. Hey. I got, a, I got a national flag in the background too. I like it. Nice. So you just got done with training. Um, where's your mask? <laughs> You're supposed to wear masks when we meet with. Uh, there we go. Uh, I'll hold you six feet away from me. Yes, I'm all the way up north, so more than six feet. So tell me, uh, you're training for uh, a fist fight, I reckon, one that was just announced in a bombshell yesterday, UFC 249. And uh, I just talked to uh, the opener, who was Sam Alvey, and he's taking on Ryan Spann. And then right after that fight is your fight with SARS. Looks like it's happening after all. We think, we hope, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks like it's actually happening, so I'm excited. What has the communication been like from, from the UFC from the time that, um, you know, all this stuff started shutting down and then obviously your fight with um, Sarge didn't happen or when you knew that it wasn't going to happen? What what were they saying to you in the interim between now and then? Um, I think they were – yeah, I think they were mostly talking to my management. Um, but they – they told me like three weeks ago or two weeks ago to get my medicals done. Um, this whole time they've said that the fight's still happening, that it won't be in New York, but it's happening still. So, you know, I've, I've just been preparing like I'm fighting regardless of knowing a location or not. It kind of keeps me a little sane too, because with all this shit going on, <laughs> uh, your head can wander a bit. Yeah. You, so you, you're just ready to get the hell out of there and uh, and go and go do what you do. Go get into a cage fight, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's my job, so I'm ready for it. So you've, you've been staying ready then. How have you been staying ready since, uh, you know, everything started shutting down in the last few weeks? Because, you know, you were still training for a certain opponent in a certain fight, which, uh, you know, looks like it's still going to be a go, so... How do you stay ready yeah. in these times? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely more difficult, but it, it kind of reminds me of when I started training. Um, I trained in a garage, <laughs> um, you know, so like we had, luckily we had some mats in our spare room, so we moved them into our living room, so we had a bit more space. And I, like, uh, Cleve, my boyfriend, he's, he's one of my main training partners, so I'm lucky that we both live together. Um, train together so i'm like he's like my size so it's just like the perf like i mean i really locked out with this situation having him around i know you guys are awesome so uh well i guess he'll be traveling with you to uh a location to be determined uh like i said i talked to sam he uh claims he doesn't know the location there's a lot of speculation out there though so what what i mean what have you been told what do you know tell us what you know <laughs> I mean, I wish I knew. Like they're they're still not telling us anything. So yeah. we're just just hope, hoping they have something and ready to go. Does it make it uh? Does it make you more nervous? Like just it's kind of scary the thought that you know you could go somewhere and end up like quarantined or something like this. You know because there are certain states that are mandating that when you go there. You know you have to have a at least a two week quarantine. But I guess if you guys are rolling together, then you're prepared for that because you're ride or die wherever y'all are at, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, it doesn't really matter because we're, we're going together. We live together. No one else lives with us. So that makes it easy. But I'm also, like, really excited that now it is said to be in the U.S., whereas before it looked like it was overseas. And with me being Canadian living in the U.S. on a work visa, um made me skeptical about being able to actually come back into the country. So now that I don't have to leave the country, like it's a pretty big relief. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and, and even if, even if in the midst of all this, let's say, let's say beforehand and this didn't, you know, they didn't put this card together. You guys were to head back to, to Canada, right? Like I'm saying if the scenario played out differently, right? Like, isn't, isn't Canada on, like, lockdown anyway? Aren't the borders locked down right now? Yeah, they 
yeah, they are. <laughs> um, we were debating going back or not, but we weren't sure where the fight was going to be or if the fight was going to happen. Um, we were just waiting to hear. So I guess this is all pretty sweet that it's happening here and that I didn't go back to Canada. But if it wasn't going to happen, I was, yeah, I was thinking of going to Canada because at least in Canada I can work if I can't fight, whereas here I can't work if I can't fight. So um, it was a bit stressful, but right now it looks like the fight's going through. It looks like I'm going to get paid. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really want to leave Vegas, but sometimes you got to do what you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, no, I, for sure. I've talked to a few others that, have, you know, like uh, well, one of your teammates, like Johnny Case, he had considered going back to, to Iowa for – for a bit, you know, and then, you know, just when stuff started getting really crazy, he's like, you know, I don't know if I want to risk, you know, having to go all other way. So, yeah, it's a good thing that you stayed here. And uh, but to your point, I understand what you mean, because all the workforce in Las Vegas is like completely shut down. Everything like that comprises like the majority, the vast majority of our economy is like all shut down right now. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to look when it's all said and done, but uh but yeah, so you're here and then this is what happened. So, I mean, it kind of forced your hand in a way. And at the end of the day, this is what you wanted. April 18th, you wanted to get to a fist fight with Sajar Eubanks and get your hand raised in the octagon. So you still have that opportunity um, as far as we're told. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I'm training like regardless of having a fight or not, I'd be training. It keeps me sane. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, like, it looks like it's going to happen. So, yeah, just I'm glad I didn't eat any cookies or binge, like, eat all my quarantine snacks like everyone else. <laughs> like like oh. this guy. <laughs> so jealous. Control. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's been good. Like, like, my weight's been great. Everything's been really good. So I've, I've really lucked out with, like, where I was at when this all started, I was in a really good place. So um, now I'm just going into a fight that I'm not injured with. So, you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I can, uh, like, I can definitely vouch for that. You know, I've seen you in the gym. I've, you know, trained with you. Like, you you are always working. Like, even if you're not in a fight camp, you're, you're staying ready, you know, uh, continuing to train, work on technique. That's good. Uh, so, like, what what other what other things are you guys doing during quarantine life to stay busy? Like, what what do you have any show recommendations or movies, like stuff to just you know, just to relax when you're not training? Video games? Um, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not really a video game person. Not a video um, game person. And I'm probably not like the best person to ask about movies and stuff because I've been watching Desperate Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand. Yes, yes, that stuff plays. Uh, I, yeah, I have to endure that stuff in my household from time to time because I'm, yeah. uh, my, you know, I'm sharing the uh, household with my wife. So yeah. Yeah, just something that takes my mind off of everything that doesn't stress me out. That I can kind of play in the background. I can get distracted. I don't have to be super focused but um another thing we've been working on is we have like a veggie garden going so we've been just like out on our little patio doing that and yeah it's been keeping us a little bit busy and it's fun watching it grow that's so awesome that that yeah so were you doing that before all the lockdown stuff because i started thinking like after the fact like damn i i wish i knew how to grow vegetables and shit <laughs> Yeah, um, so we moved into this place almost a year ago, so we got a bunch of stuff for it last year, but it was a little late um, to start, but we still actually have, like, a tomato plant from last year that's just still kicking, and it's got tomatoes on it. It's pretty cool, um, and then I planted a bunch of seeds about a month or so before all this went down, so they're starting to get fairly big, but it's not edible yet. <laughs> How are the um, how are the bugs like? Is it hard to control? Because up here where I live, all the way uh, up in the north, there's no water. There's no. It's it's a little bit higher. It's a little bit colder and really dusty. There's nothing out here. There's no bugs. Oh yeah, we just have ants in our garden. So we've been trying different things. I saw this thing where you put um, cream of wheat in a jar with a couple holes, and they eat it, and then they like get too fat to leave. Um, they just keep leaving, but then they're, 
<laughs> so it's not really working, but they're eating that instead of the plants. So I guess it kind of is working. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Way. Yeah, because there's other ways. Like, I know <laughs> I've used plenty of, like, ant killer in my day because I'm from Texas. We have these big old giant red fire ants, man. And oh, yeah. You don't, you don't want no part of those things. But, yeah, like, if, if I'm trying to grow something, like, yeah, you want the ants out of there because, they're, yeah, they're going to eat all your shit up, and that's for y'all to enjoy. So do it organically is kind of – that's kind of cool. It's a different approach. Yeah, I don't, I don't – we'll see how, how it works. It's been there for a few days, and it seems like they're only – uh, going in a trail in and out of there now so i think it's working but we'll see but yeah that's stage one i guess <laughs> so uh besides cleve who will be uh with you um during the fight I, I imagine dennis davis anyone else that we might know yeah um dennis davis will be in my corner and then uh matthew jelly i don't know if you've seen him around um yeah he's a striking coach at the pi actually he's pretty much a jack of all trades he's a yeah that guy's badass yeah so he actually came out here with us for one of cleve's fights he's from well not from our old gym but we met him at my old gym he was there for a few years so i've actually had him in my corner um like in my ashley evan smith fight and my Lucy Pilova fight. So uh, we've we've been friends for a while, and he's been staying in Vegas. So I've been really working with him a lot more this camp. And, yeah, it's been really good. Hell, yeah. Yeah, he, he's the man. Jelly is the man. Uh, man, you couldn't have a better crew in, in your corner right there. Just you, You've got the whole package. Like, everybody's super cool, like, chill down to earth, you know, just can give you the right advice, you know, both technically and just, like, you know, mental preparation, all that stuff. So very cool. Well, I wish you all yeah. the best, man. I, I, uh, I know there's a lot of logistical roadblocks that come to mind. And I, as I told Sam, I don't want to throw salt on your game. You know, I'm just thinking, I, you know, I hope everybody stays safe. Of course, this, this sport is dangerous to begin with. We all know that everyone who participates knows that going into it. Um, but as far as everything else, man, I hope you all stay safe. And uh, if and when it does happen, I will definitely be tuning in. And uh, if it's on pay-per-view, I'll, I'll shell off the money and because uh, I, I want y'all to get paid and I want to support this whole thing, um, this whole sport and everybody in it, right? Because well, yeah. we love it. <laughs> we love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited. I hope we can stay safe with it all, too. Um, I know it's pretty fucking crazy right now, but um, I mean, like, I'm healthy going in to the fight usually when i'm pretty healthy going in i come out pretty healthy too so that's a positive um yeah yeah i guess it's just one of those things you hope things just line up the way you want it to line up and everything goes smoothly yeah so was there ever a time like during all these other fights getting postponed regardless of all the stuff that dana white was saying in, in the headlines was there ever a thought in your head that like okay this one's gonna end up getting canceled like the other ones uh yeah <laughs> yeah that uh definitely crossed my mind a lot you know there's a lot going on it's not just in the u.s it's all over the world and it should be taken seriously so um i'm doing the best i can um like i said training at home staying away from everyone only going out for groceries. Um, today was actually the first day we went to the gym. Um, no one else there. Just then as we cleaned everything before we touched it. And then we cleaned everything after we were done. And I was only around people that haven't been around anyone else. So um, trying to keep it as safe as I can, but still get the work in that I need to get in. Um, yeah, Good. doing the best I can. Good. And you said you feel great uh injury free you, you you stayed ready even though like you said the uh the emotional roller coaster has been probably like 10 times worse like i can imagine that, that it normally would be during a fight camp um i mean because not only is that a stressful thing in and of itself but now we're in an unprecedented situation a, a completely unprecedented like world <laughs> like it's so surreal it's kind of like sometimes i think i'm losing my mind and like this is all just a nightmare you know, yeah. I think a yeah. lot of people feel that way. It's definitely uh, pretty crazy living out here. No one ever thinks it's really going to happen to 
to us in the U.S. and North America. It's not really something that we ever really think will happen. So definitely a wake-up call. That's why we ended up, uh, yeah, that's why we ended up with uh, really high numbers and in really kind of bad shape right now. So, yeah, hopefully this whole thing works itself out. Until then, I'll uh, I'll be here working from home, so not a – not a whole lot of adjustments other than I do miss uh, the gym. I miss you guys. I miss training at, at, at Extreme Couture. I miss, uh, I miss teaching, you know, at, at the university. And, uh, hell, that's pretty much it. Like, I can live without casinos, but it does make me sad to see our city in this uh, situation. So you guys right now are leading the charge. We don't have really – think about it. We, the casinos, we have the Golden Knights, we have, you know – all these things Vegas is known for. UFC is one of those things, and uh, y'all are kind of like the the last hope. <laughs> so let's let's yeah. see it through. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. It looks like it's gonna happen. So, um, yeah. I guess <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I guess I'm fighting. We'll see you when you get back. Uh, and if you know, if we don't talk between now and then, uh, you know, like I said, best of luck in the fight. I'll be tuning in. And uh, we'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay.